What's going on everyone? Happy Monday to you. I'm Wayne Grayson and you're watching Equipment World and it's time for another episode of The Dirt, the weekly construction and heavy equipment news show. So coming up this week on The Dirt, Bobcat is in the news with an introduction of four new models to its R-Series loader lineup. Caterpillar is celebrating a pretty big milestone related to its dozer lineup. And we've got a conversation on tap for you with Komatsu's Jason Anitzberger to discuss his company's smart construction platform, which aims to assist contractors in transitioning their job sites to digital planning. But first, let's get into the week's top construction industry headlines with a note on why this week in particular is a special one. As many of you are probably already aware, this week is National Trench Safety Stand Down Week. Now, every year the National Utility Contractors Association sponsors this week-long event where they ask contractors and their employees across the country to take part in safety demonstrations and safety discussions that are designed around spreading awareness of the best practices to use when working in and around trenches. Now, if you're interested in participating in the event, or maybe you just need some materials based on trench safety to discuss with your crews, we've got a few helpful links for you in the description below. Next up in this week's top headlines is a pretty troubling report out of Ohio. Despite a decrease in traffic due to the coronavirus pandemic, the Ohio Department of Transportation is reporting that recently five of its work zones were crashed into during an eight-day span. Two of those incidents resulted in one of the workers in those work zones being hospitalized, one of which had to be airlifted out of a rolling work zone when a semi-truck crashed into an Ohio DOT truck. Hopefully we won't see any more of this as DOTs and road crews across the country have accelerated road projects, hoping to take advantage of the decrease in traffic they've been seeing due to the coronavirus pandemic. Next up in the top headlines this week, we've got a couple of new excavator accessories. First up is EpiRock, which has launched two new models at the top end of its concrete buster attachment lineup. The new CB5500 and 7500 can be used with high reach and long front excavators, and they're designed for demolishing thick foundation walls and cracking girders and heavy concrete at height. The CB5500 has a cracking force of 150 metric tons, and it can be used on excavators from 50 to 65 tons. The CB7 7500 delivers 190 metric tons of cracking force on excavators from 70 to 85 tons. Meanwhile, CAT has introduced a couple of new pin grabber couplers. The new VB2 coupler can be used on 74 ton excavators, and the new HB2 coupler can be used on excavators ranging from 90 to 95 tons. These couplers have a redundant locking system to secure attachments, and they also feature spring-loaded arms which keep the latch closed even during a loss of hydraulic pressure. The couplers can also be used to pick up a bucket in reverse for cleaning out square corners. In other cat news this week, the company is celebrating the 75th anniversary of manufacturing its own dozer blades. And to celebrate this milestone, they shared a little bit of history surrounding how the dozer got its name in the first place. According to Cat, up until about World War II, these machines were most commonly referred to as track type tractors. And meanwhile, the blades that were put on them to push dirt were referred to as dozer blades. However, as the war went on, track type tractors gained quite a bit more recognition from the general public as soldiers and commanding officers in the US military began to hail these machines as being essential to the victorious Allied war effort. Kat says the dozer owes its widespread recognition in popular culture to the news coverage during the war spotlighting the soldiers' affinity for this machine. However, as all of these new glowing reviews of dozers came in from the soldiers who were fighting the war, the news coverage did not specify that what they were referring to was actually the dozer blade and not the tractor itself. And because of that, Kat says, eventually the term dozer became the norm for referring to the whole machine and not just the blade. And that distinction is an important one because even though Caterpillar was founded on top of a unique track type tractor in 1925, the company didn't actually start making its own dozer blades until 1945. And rounding out the week's top headlines are four new loader models from Bobcat. The new S64 and S66 skid steers and the new T64 and T66 compact track loaders bring Bobcat's next generation loader lineup to six models. All four of these new models are powered by Bobcat's new 2.4 liter turbocharged inline diesel engine with rated operating capacities ranging from 2,300 pounds to 2,450 pounds. Surrounding the new engine is a larger and redesigned cooling package. All of the new machines feature increased lift capacity throughout the lift cycle and a max reach of 120 inches for dumping into high-sided trucks and bins. The new loaders also feature a new exterior design that Bobcat says is its toughest and most durable yet. Now, 
Now we recently posted a full video breakdown on these new models and where they fall in this new R series loader lineup. So be sure to check that video out. Link is in the description below. Our guest on this week's episode of The Dirt is Jason Anitzberger, and Jason is a senior product manager at Komatsu and an expert on the company's smart construction technology platform. Smart construction is a really big concept, and there are lots of moving parts with 11 different modules for contractors to mix and match with, but really the end goal is fairly simple, and that is assisting contractors in moving to a fully digitized job site through the use of drone surveys, dozer and excavator machine control, digital site plans, and more. Now, in my past coverage of smart construction, I've kind of referred to this platform and this service as the Apple Care of excavators and dozers, and while I'm aware that's a very oversimplified way of describing it, and, and I'm aware of a, a few of the Komatsu employees that have bristled at that analogy, I still think that it is an apt description to give people an idea about what Komatsu is really going for here. They really are just trying to give a hands-on approach and a tailored approach and kind of like an a la carte approach to helping contractors navigate some of the complexities surrounding a transition to a digital job site. For each of the things that I mentioned above, whether you're talking about drone surveys or machine control or digital site plans, there's so many different third party kind of like back office options that you can kind of like put together and mix and match. And some of them may be right for you and some of them may not. And that is exactly where Komatsu is hoping to step in with a dedicated team of experts to help you figure out which are the best for you and your company. Anyway, Jason can explain all of this in a lot better detail and a lot more clear than I can, especially when it comes to what Komatsu's intentions behind the program are. So while we were in Las Vegas for Con Expo 2020 a few months ago, which painfully seems like a world away now, my colleague Tom Jackson and I asked Jason to give us the full breakdown of smart construction from his perspective. And here is that conversation with Jason. Yeah. What we see here is an overview of Komatsu smart construction. We call this digital transformation of the job site. We see a variety of solutions, about 11 digital solutions that we've announced here at Con Expo. And they're for all stages of construction, whether bidding and planning, actual earth moving and measuring, to managing and reporting. These solutions are designed to talk with each other, share data with each other. So we're breaking down those silos. We're getting the information to the people that need it across the organization. So much of construction is based upon experience or is, uh, you know, data is kept in individual solutions. We want to bust down those silos and share it as much as we can, visualizing what's going on. So whether it's uh, our dashboard solution, which can take data from drones, from our intelligent machines, the as-built data, and put it into a powerful portal where customers can analyze and interrogate that data, to some of the other solutions that are a little bit farther off, like simulation, where we can, again, take target design data and initial survey data, compare that, calculate where the quantities of material are, where they need to go, what's the most efficient way to get there, even then look at what's the optimum mix of machinery to accomplish that task, and then simulate it, construction in its entirety before we mold the first piece of equipment out to the job site, before we move that first yard of dirt. It's really giving an opportunity for the customer to have a second opinion, to play out scenarios that before they'd always have to do this or work off of their you know, 30 years of experience. We're trying to give more tools, more knowledge, more capability to everyone within the contractor's operations. That's really the idea behind smart construction. Let's leverage the technology, these digital solutions to up the productivity of the job site. For intelligent machines, we've had those since 2013. They've been great, honestly. We've really improved the productivity of individual machines. But what good is a machine that can do 50% more if the overall job site is short of trucks, if the overall job site is not benefiting? So that's why Komatsu is taking this very in-depth, focused look at technologies off machines. Not just focus on the machine, but on the job site, on the contractor's overall operations. And that's really what we hope to accomplish with smart construction. But we started back in 2015 in Japan, expanded out to North America, and working hard with our partner customers today is looking at those bottlenecks, those opportunities that can really improve overall operational efficiency. 
no doubt one of them that everyone wants to talk about is autonomous. Kamas has been doing autonomous machinery and mine science for about 20 years now. So we can handle that. We can do it, the machines, no problem. The thing is, construction job sites, generally no fence, right? There's subcontractors out there. There's not a lot of site infrastructure. The duration of the job could be much shorter than a mine site, right? So Komatsu gets that. We're looking at uh, autonomous machinery like HM400 articulated dump trucks, a common fixture on uh, job sites today, automating those, running them without operators, looking at giving you production with the flexibility of an operator-less truck. And not running from a detailed or serious command center, but out of the you know, the typical job site office of a pickup truck and a tablet. So just example where Komatsu is heading. A lot of these solutions are available today. Some of them are going to be tomorrow. And simulation autonomous are going to be a little further down the road. But we'll be commercializing these, releasing these over the next 12 months. And one of the interesting things that's not often discussed, but I noticed you have a, a solution here for a retrofit. Is that going to enable contractors to figure out, figure out the um, the financial pros and cons of retrofitting a machine, putting a new engine, repowering, those sorts of things? Yeah, that's been a, an interesting uh, point. A lot of people are talking about retrofit here at the show today. Why is Kamatsu getting into this business? Why are we doing that when we have intelligent machines? Well, simply because of the fact that there's so many legacy excavators out there in the field today working that still have a lot of life left on them, right? These machines are maybe still good for a couple thousand hours uh, more work. So what are we gonna do with them? Why do we have intelligent machines that are using 3D data on the job site? And right next to them, we have a conventional excavator. That operator has no guidance, no information in front of them. So today, there are systems available from many other suppliers. I think the issue has been a value proposition for the customer. Uh, Komatsu is trying to turn that on the head with the retrofit so that every operator can utilize that 3D data. You've already built it for your intelligent dozer and excavator. Why not put it in that legacy uh, excavator that still has some life left? And then, not only can we put the data in, we can pull the data out. So those machines, again, with GPS, they're kind of... Uh, very precise rovers per se. So we can measure that machine's uh, movement, how much material it's scooped and uh, moved, and then report that back to some of these uh, digital solutions like that dashboard that can consume machine data, drone data, and design data. Okay, so the retrofit is actually a technology retrofit. Yeah, it's, it's actually a hardware uh, okay. solution. So it's not all digital web-based, a great many of them are, but there are some hardware solutions okay. like retrofit, like intelligent machines, and like drone. Okay. And how far back in a uh, machine years can you go to technology to put technology like GPS on a machine? Tier three, tier two. What does it require to be able to come bring that machine back up to a GPS surf moving or uh, control? Yeah, great question. So retrofit kit is really what it says. It's an aftermarket type solution, so it doesn't care the make, model, or generation. Okay. So any excavator you can put that on there. Okay, neat. And. Um, Production studies, I understand that, but coaching is kind of a new thing, at least in the technology world. How, what does that look like? Give me an idea of what that, what that does and you know, who's being coached and who's doing the coaching. Yeah, that is a great question. So uh, some of these uh, solutions here are uh, digital and web-based. You know, some of them are hardware, but some of them are human-based, right? Expert-based. So uh, today, Komatsu uh, completely focused on providing uh, training and support for our intelligent machines. You know, we've been doing that since 2013. Okay. But a lot of that training support is how to run the machine, how to run the control box, which buttons to press, what do you do if you have this situation. But again, with smart construction, we've taken a wider perspective, a greater look at the entire job site. That's really where production studies and coaching come in. So not just how to run that piece of equipment and training an operator, but how best to deploy that equipment in their overall job site, how to change the operations to maximize your efficiency in individual applications. So with production studies, you know, we're there hand in hand with customers trying to show them a better way or some opportunities based upon Komatsu's 100 years of experience and global job site uh, experience as well. Whether that's production studies, comparing uh, traditional ways versus uh, new ways and showing the opportunity of the customer on his own job site doing measurements there to uh, looking at other areas of coaching and deploying some of these new digital solutions. Okay, so the supervisor is gonna be in charge of this and he will bring his operators in once a season, once a month to look at the studies and say, you know, who's doing good, who's doing bad, how can we improve them? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's so interesting being here at Con Expo and yeah. talking to customers, some of them coming into the booth and only coming thinking Komatsu 
makes iron, right? And then, yeah. you know, naturally transitioning to Komatsu supports iron or Komatsu trains on iron. Now, when they learn about this, how Komatsu is focused on the job site, it's really an expansion of the personnel that we're communicating with, right? Not only the equipment manager, but that GPS manager, that ops manager, the project managers, and up to the owner of the company. So we really want to offer something for everyone, and that's where job site coaching and introducing these different solutions uh, really affords us and the customer an opportunity to get closer together and find the win-wins. Okay, and you've got drones on there, I see, as well. Yep. Um, a lot of contractors see the potential in drones, but yep. they don't want to get an FAA license. They yep. don't want to do all the... Um, the work themselves to make drones happen in their business. What what do you offer in, in the drone module in the system for the contractors? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So uh, drones are interesting, right? They've been kind of at the forefront of discussion for a number of years, right? Um, big drama, big excitement. Some co uh, contractors maybe had some bad experiences, take a step back. We really think drone is a tool, a technology that does have a place on the job site. So Komatsu and our distributors, they generally all offer a drone solution that affords the customer an opportunity to survey a wide area of the job site in a relative fraction of the time that a traditional, traditional ground-based topo might have. And it's really just a tool to get data in. The key thing is that data then allows you lots of opportunities to either you know, optimize your uh, operations, uh, confirm uh, quantities, making sure your site's going to balance at the end of the day, and even uh, help in invoicing, right? How much earth did I move in that month? And when I invoice that bill, not only excuse me, invoice the uh, developer, the GC, I got a pretty picture and quantifiable data backing up that billing. So it's a tool that really offers a lot of opportunities for the contractor, okay. and our distributors and Komatsu is there to offer it to them. Okay, and would the distributor come out with the product support guy, fly your site for you, um, download the information and give it and give it to you or your engineers? Is that how it works, basically, so you don't have to pilot the, the machine yourself? Yeah, so great question, and uh, thanks for asking that. Um, so there's generally two different ways. So yeah. there's, uh, like I say, drone as a service, yeah, where our distributors could fly for the customer. Okay. There's also uh, the way or, or scenario where customers uh, subscribe or purchase the hardware and fly themselves. Okay. So a uh, typical scenario would be that uh, customer would start with uh, having the distributor, the Komatsu personnel, fly for them, but then as they integrate and start to do more regular, regular flights, oftentimes they take that on themselves. Okay. Because once they start, you know, they go from, you know, once a job to uh, every month to almost every week flying and really integrate it into their operations. Yeah. That's the trend we're seeing. Yeah, and then you have to tell the super riders, quit playing with the drone and get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of times people think it is playing. Um, that doesn't last too long, right? Because if there's yeah. no value there, everyone's yeah. busy. Yeah. They're going to park it and not utilize yeah. it. So the best thing about drones is it quickly transitions to a toy and pretty pictures to like this is a critical tool i need this to uh, you know drive my operations i need that data to plan efficiently okay yeah and uh, one final question i noticed you have remote and autonomous yep um both solutions are available now uh no so remote will be uh, released uh, very soon okay. this is uh, not remote operation maybe what you're thinking okay. but just the ability to remotely send data to the machine oh, okay. so new design files Okay. to those machines without having to come out with a thumb drive, okay. as well as to uh, troubleshoot or support those machines from afar. Operators got a question, hey, how do I change the setting of the machine monitor? How do I uh, load this design file, something like that? Now the customer can support his operator from afar with remote okay. view or actually pushing the buttons for the operator. So you. that's that, that's remote, and that's something that almost everyone can uh, utilize today. Very low hanging fruit, easy okay. solution, simple but impactful. Autonomous, again, that's where we're heading in the future okay. with machines that can run manned or unmanned. Okay. okay? And uh, so not necessarily remote teleoperation, mm -hmm. uh, that's not what this is doing, but either fully manned or fully unmanned, okay. right? So again, with the trucks, they can run unmanned by themselves. They can uh, follow, excuse me, let me go back an image. They can follow a manned truck. This one can leave okay. breadcrumbs and that updates that cycle each and every time. The autonomous machines follow that. Okay. to also a scenario where we're running these machines from the comfort of a pickup truck cab of, off of a tablet and we're using uh, dozers to do repetitive processes like a spreading right okay. so you can spread uh, throughout the day at the end of the day if you need to clean up a hall or something four minutes someone jumps in that cab splits it up good to go okay nice yeah there's nobody in the cab there yep. obviously so the the trucks will be just following a gps pattern that somebody's set up for them and they will they will haul the material off, dump it where they're supposed to, turn around and come back to the loading point just all day long, back and forth. Yep, that's our concept. Uh, yeah. We call it uh, the follow me truck. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, 
how to say, construction job sites, you know, they're kind of messy. They don't necessarily have a grader maintaining that haul road consistently right. like you would see on a, um, on a mine site, right? Okay. So uh, as the road gets rutted up and stuff, um, as, the, as the lead truck with the man, you know, changes his path, maybe deviates to avoid those ruts, the autonomous machines are going to follow that same path as they come around that cycle. So each and every cycle, the breadcrumbs are getting updated so that the trucks can follow the ideal path. And it's not necessarily a convoy scenario. Mm -hmm. Convoys typically apply truck to truck to truck. Mm -hmm. That's not so good from an efficiency standpoint because if the first truck is getting loaded, everyone else is waiting. So this uh, system, while we follow the path of the lead man truck, mm -hmm. the pitch will be maintained so that none of the trucks are waiting at the loading point. Okay, now assuming a contractor wants to get into this, what does the, um, the education of this contractor look like from a point of view? He goes to his dealer and says, I like what I'm seeing here. How much learning do I have to do? How many times are we gonna sit down? How many hours in the office? Are you explaining what's gonna happen coming out to the job site and getting me set up? Uh, it's a lot of information to, to pack into to, to, uh, you know, uh, a job site. So how are you guys preparing the contractors to be able to utilize all this? Yeah, a great, great question. Yeah, so as you see here, you know, 11 digital solutions, even I have, you know, trouble keeping track of it all as we talk here. Yeah. But it's not like you have to onboard and adopt them all at once. Okay. And honestly, you know, there's other companies playing in these individual spaces. Yeah. What Kamasu is trying to do, again, is have a solution that everything is designed to play well with each other. Okay. So it all starts with one phone call. Okay customer come to Komatsu and we can uh, talk with you, find out where you're at in your operations today, what technology you utilize, what would be the ideal next step. We like to build off of successes. So start with one, you know, fully implement that at your operations, see the wind, see the impacts, and then adopt the next, and adopt the next, and adopt the next. So kind of a building block approach, we find that best. You try to disrupt the customer's operations and take that all on at once, that can be super challenging. So step by step is definitely the best approach, and the beauty of it is, it's all designed to work together, so as you adopt individual modules, you don't have to worry about conflict or they're gonna work well with each other. They truly are designed for that. Okay, and as um, this becomes more prevalent in, in, on construction sites, do you see this changing uh, both the background, the experience, and the mindset of construction workers on these job sites? Are they moving uh, from a low value, uh, just repetitive motions to more technology management on the job site? Is, is that where the future is going for construction workers? So uh, a great question. I like to look at it two different ways. So uh, one way is that we're losing some experience in the, in the industry, right? Yeah. As our experienced veterans uh, retire out, uh, maybe we're lacking some workforce with that knowledge. Okay. So the technology can help supplement that lack of knowledge. Uh, as we talked about with simulation, a way for people to get a second opinion yeah. without uh, 30 years of experience, right? Yeah. So we're helping improve the productivity, efficiency of those uh, lesser experienced co people coming into the industry as the veterans retire out. But the other way to look at it is a tool, is a method to attract new talent into the right. industry. You know, some people maybe think of construction as a, a not a tech advanced field and, you know, maybe I want to go work in the office. Well, you talk to people who work in the office, they may be using a word processing or, or a spreadsheet software that hasn't changed over the last 10, 20 years too much, right? right. Then you look at the technology that we're deploying out in the construction job site, out in the field. Again, we're talking autonomous machines. There's still no commercially available autonomous cars. We have simulation using advanced uh, algorithms and you know AI. Um, all of these uh, drones even, you know, flying you know, yeah. hardware. All this technology should attract the next generation of uh, employees, of operators, of office personnel, of foremen, managers into the industry. And that's what we're super excited about because we love construction and we want the next generation to love construction. Okay. So you're saying uh, you should put gaming skills on your resume if you're applying to a construction company at this point, huh? That's not a bad idea. You know, gamification is actually something that the industry and Komatsu are looking at because what's more fun than trying to best the other guy or your yeah. you know your past performance and yeah. having the data now the metrics to do that yeah. it is really gamification coming yeah. to the industry how can we do better each and every yeah. time how can we make it an exciting challenge and therefore also have the tools to get there okay great stuff jason i yeah. appreciate your time i appreciate your time thanks for coming by thanks 
So that's going to wrap it up for us on this week's episode of The Dirt. But as always, we love to hear what you all are thinking. So be sure to drop us some feedback in the comments below. And if you like this video or found the information in it useful in any kind of way, do us a favor and hit the like button below. It really does help our channel out. And if you want more videos on the latest in the construction industry, heavy equipment, trucks, gear, and more, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time.